When Hay Group were looking for a venue for their international conference, they couldn't have chosen a more suitable location than Pudong, home to Shanghai's financial center, where some of the world's leading organizations gathered to discuss the wide-ranging subject affecting companies across the globe, business transformation, how they achieved it, and the components for success. But starting with, what is transformation? For me, it, it, it really is about how you approach it. Business. It's about how you, what sort of mind you bring to business. I think you've got to start on a values base. So you start there and then you build from that. Um, so a re-examination is really what you do, I guess, when you begin a transformation. So it's not a one-off event or a project. It's much more than that. It's keep making sure that while you have one eye focused on your next quarter or next month, but you have a vision which is to build sustainability and build a foundation which will help you to be successful over a long period of time. So in one word or one statement, I would say, building future-ready organizations is what is transformation. Transformation is, um, is ever-changing. Um, it's changing from one business initiative to another. And often people think of transformation to be different. I often think of transformation as doing the same thing differently. Well, I define transformation as more of a radical change that needs to be brought about for future growth. And it's, uh, I think, slightly different from um, a turnaround in a company, which is a more gradual change or a more, um, rather a smaller change. So that's what our experts believe transformation is. Next, they discussed how to transform. So one of the things that we did um, uh, very early on in the growth of the business was to actually document what we thought the values were. We, we will absolutely always recognise that even um, different operating sites, even a few hundred kilometres away, might have a different culture. And we actually will embrace the differences in the culture of, of, each, of each site that we might operate, but we'll say they should all have the same values. So all the same underlying values um, are extraordinarily important and, that's, and, and without that I don't think we can sort of successfully build a, a business model. The preservation of values is probably the most significant point. If I look back over the last 57 years as I've studied the leaders that have come throughout the McDonald's ranks and certainly in South Africa over the last 18 years the leaders have come before me, the one common thing about McDonald's leaders is they share similar values. And in, when times are tough, uh, when the economic trends are the headwinds are tremendous, there's one thing that you need to fall on that will not transform, and that's the values of what you stand for. No uh, one model fits all kind of strategy. So one thing I learned uh, working in different parts of the world and different organizations is that each organization eventually gets its own rhythm and its own cadence. So it's, there is no really off-the-shelf model you can buy which will help you to stay competitive and be successful in an environment as unpredictable as it is today in this part of the world. Two, I think talent is not enough. I mean, talent is a buzzword and does not, it does not help you to build sustainable uh, strength uh, in the company. So going beyond talent and looking in a holistic manner. I think the most important thing that you could do as an organization is to get your people to commit. Because once you have that commitment from the people, they take ownership for this change. And once that is in place, they really work hard towards it. And without that, it just does not work. Because we really saw that in the process we went through, that once the people realized that they were doing this for themselves and they wanted to do this, the kind of progress we saw, the kind of commitment we saw was unbelievable. And that is what actually made our program a success. Well, for CGG, market leader in the world of geoscience, when it came to their biggest transformation, a merger with the American company Veritas, they went for a specialist partner to help them. Hay Group pre uh, played a tremendous role. I have to say we were working with Hay Group before. I knew the Hay Group through uh, our own development. Uh, as I told you, we had some other mergers, we grew. And uh, we needed to have a coherent compensation system. That's how the Gray Group joined us. Then we looked at the compensation system, roles and responsibilities, and the team building. And so Hay Group has another strong, uh, very strong ability in, in, in this part of the world. They helped us to have more effective teams. So we were on team building, uh, uh, integrating the form of smaller mergers as this Vetas opportunity uh, you know, um, 
could be seized. So we asked the Hay Group, how do you have possibilities to accompany us? Because it's the first time we go through something like that. And we need outsiders because we bring people from both sides together and we need uh, neutral and uh, external people to listen to both and to make the good proposals to the people, to our board, and to help us to rely with the clients. So basically we embarked 40 consultants of the Hay Group with a top team of uh, 20, 30 people of CGG touring around the world, make it possible to have the two groups joining. It was an absolute adventure. While transformation of an organization can take several years, cost significant sums of money, and include some complex strategies to achieve, one final piece of advice that is simple to do and vital for success. It's very important to make sure that you remember to acknowledge and thank your staff and do that in a genuine way. And I think that if they see that it is genuine uh, and, and that the acknowledgement and the concern and care for them is genuine, they will of course support whatever you're trying to achieve.